Minister, one of the things that uh, we did, because people knew that this event was happening, yes. um, Business Day, we invited um, readers to pose questions to you. And uh, we've got four questions that sort of broadly represent some of the thinking out there. And uh, if I could just put those questions Certainly. through to you. Yeah. Uh, the first one is from somebody called Mzanzi Girl. She's in Johannesburg and says, how is South Africa's education system preparing the youth for careers in the digital economy, particularly for careers that don't even exist yet? Yes, well, firstly, if you look at the ICT, I mean, the, sorry, the basic education white paper, it spoke of the need to use ICT to advance education in respect also of not just learners, uh, but also the teachers, right? And also the administration in the school to reduce the time you spend, obviously, uh, with administration making more of time available for actually teaching and learning. We are, of course, obviously with the Department of Basic Education rolling out schools, as I said, 788 more in, the, in this financial year, the part of the financial year that remains. We've started training teachers in Gauteng, this very province. I think it's 2,200 tablets that are going to be issued, uh, providing free um, connectivity, 3G and Wi-Fi. Um, no, it's 2,200 schools, 8,800 uh, tablets, as I remember. And uh, we can do more. Uh, we have engaged with the mobile operators, Telcom as well, uh, Neotel on uh, the need to engage more with us to roll out uh, e-connectivity to schools. But uh, yes, we can do more, and we mean to do more. All right. Um, Byte GPs in Johannesburg and said, should government not lead by example when it comes to technology and innovation? Home affairs, licensing offices, etc., could uh, be a little bit more efficient and more automated uh, through technology. Would this not show government's commitment to uh, improving? Using Very technology? fair question, and right. We should do more here again, but things have begun to improve. Home affairs in particular. I think the South Africans don't know how challenged it was. It's not perfect by any means, but it's made significant advances through ICT. For example, now, um, obviously, as part of the elite, I don't apply for a passport in a queue, but I hear from my friends uh, not least my sister, <laughs> no, not, not, who is very critical of the government, though she votes for us, uh, that, hey, you know, she was stunned. And people do SMS me, you know, and they phone me and say, hey, look, I, 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 I see on my cell phone. This is where the process of my passport and so on. Somebody told me they got a passport within 14 days, not so long ago, which was unheard of before. IDs as well. So there is that. Mm. We need to do more. We can help ourselves to do more by ensuring the things that we said on behalf of government this morning are actually delivered on. Uh, in other words, if we had more broadband and more spectrum available and digital migration, the opportunities will actually expand for government actually doing more. Can I ask the young man, if he's young, I don't know, but I think it's young, or anybody here, to actually put pressure on government? Right. Civil society needs to be organized also, to put pressure on government in various ways to get these things done. All right, uh, we've got one from uh, Mangi, who's in Johannesburg, uh, but says, as a youth from Venda, nothing is being done to encourage innovation. South Africa has so many socioeconomic challenges. How can we get as many young South Africans, especially the majority, to start becoming problem solvers using technology? I think yeah, you see, she's that. the sort of person mm. who should hold us to account for what I've said here. Mm. Because my theme was around particularly people marginalized in the rural areas. I mean, Venda is uh, generally a poor mm. part of our country. Look, uh, we do have programs. It's, I think our difficulty, as with government generally, which emphasizes the need for ICT savviness, is we don't communicate enough of what we actually do. I think we're doing certainly far more than is made out in the public discourse, even if less than we should and are capable of. But we certainly are doing more. Mm. Uh, look, in our own department, I, I, I discovered very recently, mind you, having been there for a while, but only very recently, that we have got an e-cater program. What we do is we take young people between the ages of 18 and 30, I process them through a program. I think if I recall, it's called the ICDL, International Computer Driving uh, Learner Program. And some of you may know more, most of you will know more about this than I do, but what we're doing is we take them to the FET college, 
but we also give them life orientation uh, programs. And the idea is that once they've gone through the process, the mill as it were, they're attached to public institutions, municipalities, clinics, schools, even the FET colleges. We also have for women a MobiNet program, uh, which is directed particularly the concerns of women, uh, young girls actually, and also their vulnerability in a society where boys and men generally have uh, dominant power and their vulnerability to abuse and so on, and how they can connect with each other and share experiences and learn from it. We are going to do everything as government to deliver. But we have our limitations. We would like other people, not just to come to meetings like this, uh, speak their minds, and then fade away. This is meant to be a democracy where citizens are meant to be active. People here have far more skills than the collective skills I have in the department there, or certainly I have, or the deputy minister has. Last question is from Lizelle, yeah. and who says, how will we be able to harness the full potential of the internet and the freedoms it offers in the face of the new privacy law proposed for South Africa? Yeah, firstly, the privacy law has not been promulgated yet, not been signed off by the president. From what I gather, some other of the opposition parties are going to take it to the constitutional court. Uh, no law in our country can actually undermine the constitution. We are lucky to have this wonderful constitution admired the world over. And we have a constitutional court that can supersede parliament in a case where legislation is passed that undermines what the constitution says. This is a vibrant, thriving democracy as the South Africans here know. I'm sure civil society will challenge government at every turn. There's another organization emerging that's resonating with those youth by its populist claim. They can't do those things, presumably, but hey, with the unemployed and disgruntled and aggrieved, if you say to them, jobs for all, nationalized without compensation, you know, yeah. people... So in short, we, we, we really don't think at this stage there's any reason to be concerned, but it's a legitimate question to ask.